everybody. I encourage you guys to fill the front, fill the room, and let's worship.
Good morning, good morning, good morning. It is great to be here as always with all of you. I'm going to get out of the way of this table. I don't want them to run me over. You guys are doing a great job with that. All done. Good morning. Great job, worship team, for not just singing and leading in worship, but for carrying a table. It's awesome. We're just good at everything, aren't they? Again, so glad to be here with each and every one of you. What a blessing this, opportunity, this time is that we are afforded each and every Tuesday and Thursday without fail. The, the opportunity to be able to gather together praise God through song, to praise God through the reading of the word, and to praise God through fellowship. Of course, we had to hear from our fourth and final speaker in this series that we've been in, Campfire Stories, where we've been looking at different um, parables. Again, short, small parables that Jesus gave in his Sermon on the Mount, which point towards his kingdom. What it means to follow him, what it means to be a true follower of Christ, what that looks like, and also what the kingdom of heaven looks like. Heard from Jameson White, on Tuesday, and he talked about the treasure, right? That, that Jesus came and he gives us and offers us this treasure. And it's a treasure that we should sell everything that we have. Everything that we have ever wanted does not compare to the treasure of eternal life, of entering into that right relationship with our Heavenly Father. 
And it's not a treasure, of course, that we hide, that we put underneath a lamp or we put underneath a box and we shove into the corner, in the dark corner of a closet and save for ourselves. But it's one that we bring out and we share with the world around us. It's a treasure that we show everyone. We say, look at this treasure that I found. I hope that you find it as well. And I'm pumped for the speaker that we have today. He came last year. He did a phenomenal job. Um, I think uh, this gentleman uh, puts Mr. Nolan to shame in the running department. He's older than Mr. Nolan, and I think he runs just as far, if not further than him. Uh, this man is the man, uh, not just running. He is the man from the pulpit. He's been a pastor for a number of years. He's at um, Mountain View Church, and he is the head pastor of their Sunnyside location. So you give it up for Pastor Ken Wilkinson. <laughs> All right, good morning. Thank you, Jason. For what it's worth, Mr. Nolan is faster than me because I'm old enough to be his dad, all right? That, you can't lie in track because numbers can't be lied about. So my name's Ken. I'm a pastor in Southeast Fresno. That's the part of Fresno that's closest to here. Whenever you're a guest, you always put up a picture of your family so that they don't think that you're a serial killer. Uh, that's us. That's my wife, Anna, next to me. We've been married for 20 years next week. Uh, and then down in the corner, those are my kids because we left them there. That's the beach in Mexico. That's uh, Eden, Ellie, and Micah. That's 15, 14, and 10. I said, the best way to learn a language is to live there. So see you later. And they said, no. And I said, you're learning one word already. That's great. Because <laughs> it's the same. Sweet. All right. So what you're thinking right now is okay. We got like 16 minutes of nap time. And you're totally right. If you want to go to sleep, go to sleep, put your head back, you're in a good comfy chair, I was in mine earlier, just relax. And the reason that we sleep through things is because they don't really matter. Right? Nobody's sleeping through asking out a girl, okay? Girls, if the guys do that, the answer is already no, okay? But you, we sleep through things that we don't care about. We sleep through things that don't matter. And what we're going to talk about today isn't something to sleep through. It isn't something to put off until later. It's something for now. It's not going to rely on your parents. It's not going to rely on the good people at church. It's not going to rely on the people that you think are going to do everything while you just sit back in private school, learn all the information, and somebody else is going to handle this. What we're talking about today is something for all of us. You've been in your Campfire Stories series, which are little stories with a really, really big point. And the point for today isn't just for when we die. The point for today is right now. So media team, let's go ahead and put up today's passage. And I want us all to read this in our outdoor, get excited. Your team just scored a touchdown voice, unless you're a Raiders fan. We're hoping for next year, okay? Next year. We're going for next year. All right, let's read this out loud. You are the salt of the earth. But what good is salt if it has lost its flavor? Can you make it salty again? It will be thrown out and trampled underfoot as worthless. All right, I want to say two things. Because my goal is that nobody takes a nap today. First thing is that you're plan A. All right? You are plan A. We know how it is in life. Like, you make a plan, you have an idea of how things are going to go, and then life hits, and all of a sudden you're on, like, plan M. And you haven't even gotten to school yet. What is going to happen with this? Your plan A is what we're talking about here. Jesus is talking in this, group, in this message to a group of people who've got no control and no authority over their own life. They are a grounded junior hire who has lost his phone. They've got nothing. You can sit outside and look at the dog. Like that's about all you can do. And so Jesus is talking to a group of people who have no control over their lives politically. They're ruled by the Romans. They've got no control over their lives religiously because they're not good enough to be the Pharisees. This is the middle of the day, and they're there sitting on a hill listening to Jesus because they got no job. And Jesus tells them, you are the salt of the earth. It's you. You're the plan A. There's no plan Z. There's no plan B. There's no A with a little number at top or an asterisk. This is you, your planet. I think in the world, there, there's no such thing as a practicing Christian. You know, there's practicing people of other faiths. 
If you're a Christian, it's game time. It's go time. I get to coach cross country and track in Clovis, and I love it because the gun goes off at the beginning, and nobody's like, Coach, what do I do? Like, it, it's you go. There's no more practice. The gun goes, and you go. Like, that. Don't, those are the only rules. Seriously. And what he's saying here is there's no more practice. It's go time. It's now. And the way that we read this today isn't that them back there, their plan A, the people in the Bible, the people whose names like we still have except for Haggai because that guy wouldn't make it in junior high. That's a tough name. Those people, their plan A. But here's the reality. I'm, I'm no longer a young pastor. I'm now like... God is my barber. That, that's our deal. But in my generation, in every J generation before me, and in your generation, and everybody who's going to one day look at you as old and out of touch and irrelevant, and what was your hairdo in high school? All of them, for all of us, one thing has been true from start to finish. As we look at this book about Jesus telling people, you are the salt of the earth. You are plan A. The reality for the church for the last 2,000 years is that it has always, all time, forever been one generation away from extinction. I think about it. If the people, dude in the blue shirt, he was touching his friend up here. Thanks, dude. If the people that Jesus was talking to in this day didn't carry out what he was telling them to do, we wouldn't be here. 2,000 years ago, a Jewish guy died in Israel, and because of that, we're in chapel. The only reason why that happens is because every generation is plan A. Every generation is God's plan to take broken, busted up people and say, this is the generation I'm going to use to be the salt of the earth. I mean, salt in that day, they didn't have refrigerators. So they'd take meat and just cover it in salt because otherwise you'd eat it after a week and you'd die because you can try that with your chicken when you get home. Just fillet that thing, stick it on the sidewalk, come back next Tuesday and eat it. You won't have to go to school on Wednesday. That's good news, but you won't ever do anything again because you're dead. So you're saying, salt, this is how we preserve a world that's dying. And Jesus says, this is your plan A. And that's for every single person who says they're a Jesus follower. And the reason isn't because you're special, right? The reason isn't because you learned everything and you do it all the Bible verses. And if you went to a church with Awana, like you finished Awana looking like a general because you just got stuff everywhere because you know everything. That's not the answer. The answer is something so much better. It's like this. When you and I become a Christian, and if you're here and you're not a Christian and your parents don't know, they just sent you here thinking that this was going to work. But you know you don't, like, you don't have a relationship with God. They talk about Jesus saving you from your sins, and that's just not you. One, you can make that decision today. Two, but, but when it happens, the thing that makes Jesus followers Jesus followers isn't that they try hard. It's that something happens. We ask Jesus to forgive us from our sin. Our sin separates us from God because God's holy and you and I aren't. And when our sin is forgiven, we can have a relationship with God. And so God's Holy Spirit moves in to you and me. It's the God of the Bible, the God who created the world, the God who, who lived on, with human skin on in the person of Jesus. Doesn't just walk around healing people and water skiing without a boat. He moves inside of you. And so your life is now filled with God's Holy Spirit. I put the bucket here because I heard if we spill on the stage, Mr. Gossenberger doesn't get paid this month. So the bucket's a good thing. You're filled. The only reason why each generation keeps the church alive isn't because they have good ideas. It's because it's filled by the Holy Spirit. To live on mission, to not practice our faith, but to live our faith in a way that for 2,000 years and will continue to do so changes the world. What's the answer? What's the plan, you? 
your plan A. And there's no plan B. And the second point I want to make. First one is what? You are plan A. That's right. Second point is that as plan A, we're meant to spill. We're meant to spill. Like this water is excellent. I got it straight from the bathroom. Like from, from, from the sink this time. But you know what's going to happen to this water in a week? Yeah, you is right. But in a month, that's big time, ew. In a year and a half, like that's another get out of school policy. I thought that's another get out of school plan. This isn't going to be any good. It's like the cup is good. It's going to hold information really well. It's going to know all the things that you know. It's going to do everything that it's supposed to do really, really well. But because nothing flows out of it, this is going to be gross. All of us agree with that. Even the kid who's like, give me 20 bucks and I'll drink that. Welcome to junior high. You're doing a great job. You and I are meant to spill. All right? We're filled with the same thing, but we're not filled just to stay full. We're filled to spill. We're filled for what happens inside of us to flow through us. Because the same God who fills us is the same God who's used, busted up, broken people for 2,000 years to keep the church one generation away from extinction. And so there's two ways where we spill. First way is to spill for your generation. The best gift that you can give anyone you know who doesn't know Jesus is to introduce them to Jesus before they're 18. Because there's something about that after 18, people still come to Jesus, but it happens a lot less. The best gift that we can give if you're a practicing game time, I'm on, the gun is popped, I am running, Christian, is introduce as many people as you can to Jesus as young as you can. That's how we stay full, because the same God who fills us is going to continue to fill us so it overflows inside of us, outside of us, to people around us. That's God's plan A. You are plan A, and you are not meant to stay full. You're meant to continue to spill out. We spill for the people that we know who don't yet know Jesus. That's God's purpose for the whole church. So you spill for the people that are your generation, that know you, that don't yet know Jesus. And you make a plan, you make a point, you make an effort, you make a destination. This is the event that I want them to come meet Jesus at. Or this is the conversation that we're going to have at my house and I'm going to tell them about Jesus. Not because you're special, not because you're a great arguer and you know how to answer everything. But because for 2,000 years, God has filled his people with his spirit so they can fill. So that they can be the link that gets the church to the next generation. And the second way we spill is for the world. We spill for the world. Because you live where you live. And I'm not talking about your gated community or whatever. Because your address ends with America. You're one of the richest people on the face of the planet. And there's so many people in our world who don't have any access to anyone to tell them about Jesus. Like, don't even, they don't even know there's a Jesus they don't know about. And the way that God uses rich people in the Bible is he fills them, just like you and me, to spill them. They're rich for a purpose. You're American for a purpose. Whether you've lived here for nine generations or, well, let's see, we got here last Wednesday, so that makes 11, or that makes eight days. You're here, you're here for a reason. Not just to know stuff, not just to get bored and fat and happy with knowledge and never spill out ever, but to use your life, to empty your life, knowing that as we empty ourselves, God is gonna be faithful to fill us continually. Why? Because he knows better than you and I know that this whole church that you learn about each day 
is and always has been one generation in extinction. And God's plan to keep it alive <coughs> is you. To put you on mission. To send you out to people that know you but don't yet know Jesus. For you to empty yourself so that the world can know him. All right, let's stand and pray. Jesus, thank you that you came to the world to rescue the world from its sin. Thank you that you came into the world knowing that we're messed up people, that we're sinners in need of a Savior, and Jesus is our Savior. Thank you that you're not a God who just filled up information and kept it in that way, but you showed us how to live, you taught us how to live, and then you gave your life to cover our sin so we could have a relationship with you. If you're here today and you've never made that decision as you go to small groups or whatever is after this, because I don't go here and I don't know, uh, you need to talk to somebody today. And all you need to say is tell me how to become a Christian. And whoever you tell, they're going to they're gonna know how to lead you through that. And it's going to be the best decision you've ever made because you're going to find freedom today. You're going to find forgiveness today. You're going to meet Jesus today. And he's going to save you from your sin and change the direction of your life. And if you're here and, and you already are a Christian, I want you to think about the people that you know who don't yet know Jesus. And I use that word yet intentionally because you are the answer for them knowing Jesus. Your plan A. You're the answer for God's church always being one generation away from extinction. So I want you to stretch out your hands today like you're catching something. Jesus, fill us with faith today to know that you didn't make a mistake with us, that we're not just bench players who, who are never going to do anything, but we're men and women active in your army, active in your cause, active in your mission to rescue and redeem the world. Fill us with faith today to know what that looks like for us and to act on it. Not just to be filled up with information, but to be tired from spending our lives seeing you proclaimed in every tribe, tongue, nation, and friend that we have that doesn't yet know you. Use us today. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Let's pray for Pastor. Lord, uh, again, we are so blessed to be at a school where we have this opportunity. Again, it was mentioned in Pastor Ken's sermon that we live in the richest country in the world, the richest country that has ever existed. Not only that, but we are blessed with the opportunity to praise and worship you without threat of physical harm and really any form of harmful persecution, Lord. And so we want to say thank you for the time that we have on Tuesdays and Thursdays to hear from men and women who bring forth your word in a powerful way. And we want to say thank you for Pastor Ken and the words that you provided for him to share with us today. We thank you for the time that he gave, not just this morning, but the time that he gave in the days prior to this to prepare his sermon, to get it ready for what he presented. Pray that you be with him in his home as a father and as a husband, that he's both loving and caring, but also that you, you give him um, the, uh, the authority to be the leader in his home, to guide them, to follow you more faithfully than that he is that man as at home, as well as he is at Sunnyside, uh, Mountain View Sunnyside, leading the church. May you use him in a powerful way, but first and foremost, may he follow you in your guidance in his life. And may you direct him in everything that he does. I pray this in your name. Amen. Thank you. All right, so you can all pop squat real quick. So just, just a little back information. When, when I invite these speakers to come, I pray about it, I process through it, I put together the series, I plan this all out, I get the scripture references, and I put the information in front of each and every one of the individuals that comes up here. I give them the scripture, I give them the topic, and I give them a sense of direction. I do not tell them to do what they do specifically. And so when a pastor comes up here and gives you the gospel and says, will you commit your life to Christ? That's not me telling them to do that. That is the spirit leading them to do that. 
And so when they come up here to do that, I, it's powerful. Because that is the spirit telling them there is someone in this room. There is someone present today who needs to hear this and needs to say, yes, today I'm committing my life to Christ. When I was a pastor for 10 years, if just one student came up to me, if just one individual came up to me and said, my life is forever changed, that's what it's all about. One out of 400, that's all that matters. So if you were one of those people today, if you were one of the people last week with Pastor Dave that said yes to Christ, don't leave campus today without walking up to someone on campus that you know, a teacher, a faculty person, and say, how do I become a Christian? How do I follow Christ more faithfully? How do I do that? Don't leave today without saying you, you want to be a part of Christ's family. Don't. Because that happens because the Spirit leads, and I know there's someone out there. I felt it when he, when he did it. I know there's one of you. Don't leave today without going to someone. All right, everyone. Seniors.